Uh, In the bottom. Here we go. Oh, Randy. Yeah, we straight chillin', serial killin', three cold villains on the mic, got you reelin', five star rayin' from the floor to the ceiling, if you catch a one star, no time for feelings, got a team and DJ on the ones and twos, by the name Bells and Bobs, so don't get confused, so grab a seat by the fire, roast them all over two, and prepare to hear the legend of the straight chillin' crew. Welcome to another childlike episode of Straight Chilling, the weekly horror movie review show where you chill and we kill, slice, dice, and chop up yet another horror movie. My name is Bob. I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode 428, recorded Monday, June 19th, 2023. Tonight we're talking about another classic. This is the original 1988 Child's Play. Before we get into it, let me introduce everyone else on the show. Uh, first up, calling in from Seoul, South Korea, we got your boy Soju. What's up, man? Oh, what up? It's your boy, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy Stains. How you doing, Bob? <laughs> I like the reference. I'm doing well. <laughs> I know you do, yeah. Mr. Ska Man. Um, Ska Man. Yeah. yeah, no Ska on this one, though. Sorry, Bob. Just a little no. tease for you. Unfortunately, they missed the boat on that one. <laughs> they uh, missed the boat in 1988. <laughs> Rin- Renfield didn't. They got it right. <laughs> Finally. Uh, Last but not least, uh, making her triumphant return to Straight Chilling. Everybody, welcome back our good friend, Rachel. What's up, Rachel? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back. I'm glad I didn't kill it with Infinity Pool. <laughs> no, thanks for coming back. <laughs> I mean, you're on thin ice for sure. Mm, but... mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll I mean, see. I did talk about genitals quite a bit for a first meeting. <laughs> Oh, uh, barely enough. That's the problem. That's the issue mm, here. Step up my dick game. Got it. Yeah. Got we'll, it. we'll see how this <laughs> one plays out. Um, uh, for listeners who might not be aware, Rachel, uh, you are part of um, several podcasts. Uh, why don't you tell everybody what you do and where they can find you? Sure. So I am a host on several of the shows on the Zombie Girls Podcast Network, including the original uh, Zombie Girls, as well as More Deadly, uh, the cast of Caw and Stream Queens. Um, also, we do a fan podcast about Nick Cage called The Untitled Nick Cage Show. I dare you to try to figure out how we creatively came up with that. Um, and we just cover horror from a lot of different perspectives, like uh, More Deadly is specifically about women directed horror. And for fans of the show who are frequent listeners and know Caitlin, she is someone who's uh on the been on the show quite a few times and is a good friend of the show yeah awesome yeah slam all of that into your ears every mm-hmm. single one do it insert it yourself. in your ear holes immediately oh mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah cool um let's go ahead and tackle some housekeeping i think we have a lot to get through uh so let's let's fly through some of this here um uh, here's another reminder we do have our july poll currently posted on our patreon website if you support us at five dollar level or above you get the chance to vote on a movie we're talking about this july uh, this is randy's takeover month and he chose three animated features we're going to be voting on uh they are the house paprika and watership down whoa bomb how are those numbers looking paprika still on top yeah it's got to be the winner like i don't yeah. see it everybody, <laughs> everybody just, just keeps change. voting for, for <laughs> paprika yeah bob have uh, you seen any of these films no i know basically nothing about i saw all like of them. half of the house i think where they came out because randy was fucking it up so much leave it to randy mr obscure yeah we'll just be going fam- blind are you familiar with any of these rachel yeah, I've seen all but paprika. I mean, okay. and I have the therapy bills to prove it. <laughs> she was Jesus. Cool. All right. Well, oh, Randy. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Get your votes in before the end of June. We'll see what we're talking about this July. Um, in other Patreon news, we dropped a new mini cast last Friday in which uh, it, it was a recorded Q&A session with Ted Gagan, the director of Brooklyn 45. Uh, from the Overlook Film Festival earlier this year. If you watch that movie on Shudder, it just hit Shudder last Friday. I recommend checking it out um, and then listen to our review on it. 
And for some additional uh, context for that movie, uh, check out Ted's Q&A over on Patreon. It's, uh, it was great, really informational um, and like really heartfelt. He got into some uh, emotional stuff. Um, it, was, it was good. Check it out. Um, this, not this Friday, Friday after? No, this Friday. Yeah, this Friday. Juice, you got a new mini cast drop and you're talking about the Pope's Exorcist. Yeah, Bob, you stole my 100th spot. We now have 100 mini casts. I guess this will be Ted 101. Ted stole it. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, Ted stole it. Well, that's more appropriate then. We'll give it to Ted. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah, this is episode 101 of the mini cast. Uh, and, yeah, I was talking about Russell Crowe and the old Pope's exorcist, Russell Crowe. <laughs> slanging demons around doing his crazy <laughs> action horry kind of thing um it's an interesting film but yeah i'm share my full opinions on that coming up this friday check it out slinging them demons Woo. um in other patreon news <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Slaying well, that's the what the kids demons. are calling it. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of make this movie sound as enticing as possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're uh, we're going to be opening the You Pick the Flick tier on Patreon uh, Sunday, June 25th. Uh, so if you guys are listening and you want to outright pick a movie for us to review on the show, this is the only way to do that. Uh, we open the this tier uh, quarterly, and there's only five spots per quarter. They typically go fairly fast. Um, so mark your calendar for Sunday, June 25th. We're going to open it at an undisclosed time of day. You just got to check uh, Patreon throughout the course of the day. And if it is open, go ahead and grab you one. Um, yeah, Bob, as I, under as I understand, that's only $100 per spot. Is that correct? No, it's it's on a discount uh this quarter oh what i know <laughs> <laughs> just giving um, money away we're giving you money crazy <laughs> bob <laughs> come on down to crazy bob discount department store <laughs> yeah uh yeah june 25th um so how much does that cost, Bob? Oh, it's twenty five dollars. <laughs> it's twenty twenty five dollars. Okay. And... Are there any kind of bonuses you get with that? Matter of fact, yes, there are. Juice, <laughs> thanks for asking. So what happens when Randy leaves? <laughs> um, yeah, That's Randy bumps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you get well. You get a pick a movie for us to review. Of course, we send you an enamel pin that is exclusive for people that have joined the you pick the foot tier. We also about send the you enamel pin. <laughs> I know. Probably everybody has. We also send you a custom VHS sticker with the movie title uh, of your choice. And then we also put like our rating in the day we recorded the show. And um, we also encourage you guys, you don't have to do this, but we encourage you guys to send an email or a voicemail with your own rating and review for the movie. And then we'll play or read that on the show and um, kind of make you guys more part of the show. Um, I think that's everything. Yeah. That's part of straight chilling history. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's it for Patreon juice. What do you got going on? Oh, Bob, I've got so many things. So starting off, uh, we're just about a month away now from our event that we're hosting here in Seoul. That is going to be called Summer Chills, and we are co-hosting it with the Dark Side of Seoul and the DCC Cafe here um, in Seoul, which is where it's going to be hosted. We're going to be doing some screenings. We're going to kick it off at 7 p.m. with the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And we're going to be following that up with a Korean film called A Whispering Corridors, which is like a ghosty film. And um, so, yeah, we're going to be hanging out. Uh, me and Sean are definitely going to be there. Uh, even beforehand, the DCC Cafe has a lot of comic books and board games, so feel free to come hang out with us. Uh, they got really good food specials, too. We're going to be doing some raffles, giving some prizes away. So come hang out with us on July 22nd. That is a Saturday. Um, it's probably going to be raining because monsoon season's coming. So come hang out and watch some spooky movies with us. Um, also, coming out next Monday, yeah, so next Monday is a new Creature Comforts, which is our YouTube spinoff series where we cover uh, horror-adjacent properties. I'm talking with Jacqueline from A Cut Above, and we're discussing The Wizard of Oz, OG, throwback. Um, yeah, 
So nice. excited to finally sit down with Jacqueline and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. That was really fun. Also, Bob, you have a new Tiki video coming up in preparation for Jaws. Um, you are making a brand new Jaws-themed Tiki drink. Uh, what was that called, Bob? Jaws! Yeah, uh, really a, a, more in preparation for 4th of July because Jaws has been out for a while. But Well, uh, <laughs> never we, heard you know we're all watching yeah. it. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 4th of July is around the corner. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to make a Tiki drink inspired by Jaws. And this one is called um, the Quince Quench. The character Quince in the movie, he's a salty seaman. He's going to go hunt and catch that shark. And um, there's a couple of choice uh, beverages that he uh, chugs or talks about throughout the course of the movie. And I wanted to use those ingredients to make a tiki drink. So I did. Um, yeah, check that out. What date is that going up on YouTube, Juice? So that's going to be going up on Thursday, the 29th. So plenty of time for people to go out, get the ingredients, nice. make the cocktail for the 4th of July um, if you're interested. But I had that tiki drink. Well, I shot them all. So, yeah, I, I definitely <sighs> tasted it. It was all. delicious. That one that one was probably one of my favorites. Um, yeah, yeah. So perfect for 4th of July. Apparently, there's a Narragansett shortage. So if you do want to really? make it, I'll let you know right now. Go ahead and find some Narragansett. Okay. Yeah, apparently, there is. Yeah. Hmm, okay. Everyone's prepping for 4th of July. And yeah, already. finally, starting next week, uh, we are going to be covering the Bifan uh, Film Festival here in Korea. It's our first opportunity to cover a film festival here. Uh, Bob and Randy just knocked out the Overlook Film Festival a couple months ago, and now we're doing Bifan. So I'm going to be here uh trying to be it's like 10 days long i'm going to try to be out there as much as possible covering stuff on the ground also we've been getting all kind of screeners and stuff so bob and randy are also going to be participating we're going to have youtube content we're going to have articles and reviews written up on our website and bonus episodes all kind of stuff interviews so uh keep an eye and ear out for all that stuff Ooh, bob i think that's all my housekeeping all right, I got two more things. All right. But... <laughs> no. <laughs> Real quick. Rachel um, just, all right. I know. The patience. I mean, the FOMO uh, is just stacking and stacking yeah. and stacking. How much can I take? <laughs> we do too much shit. Um, at the time of you listening to this show, um, I will have just uh, been a, a guest over on Plug It Up. Um, I believe Caitlin usually drops her episodes on Tuesdays, so this should be out before before this show. Um, we're talking about a movie called Thoroughbreds. Um, it's a great movie. It's uh, It's got uh, Anya Taylor-Joy in it. it. It's also Anton Yelchin's last film. Um, and uh, yeah, check it out. Watch it. Listen to the show. Show, plug it up anywhere you get your podcast. Um, yeah. Also, finally, we're going to be doing a Joe Bob watch party this Friday, the He's 23rd. Back, huh? Yeah, he is back um, for like the second half of this season. Oh, I think wow. the next five weeks, there's going to be Joe Bob's mm, okay. um, happening on Friday. So yeah, watch party uh, Friday, the 23rd at 9 Eastern. So yeah, hang out. Mark the calendars. Ooh. That's all I got. I think our house is clean. All right. I've got the bump ready. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm so glad. Is clean. All right. All right. Let's uh, finally get into the main events. We're talking about child's play, and we're kicking it off with the back of the box. What's on the back of the box? <laughs> Nailing it. Bob, do you have this box? <laughs> I do. I have it. Um, I have it on 4K. No big deal. You know, it's not a big deal. So you only but... just have one box? Is that what you're telling me? No. Laser disc? I guess you're not a real <laughs> fan. Yeah, I'm going to have to go shopping now. Uh, I do have it on VHS. I should have watched it on VHS. You should have. I'm Flex. disappointed in you. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're talking Child's Play, the original from 1988. Uh, this is rated R with a runtime of an hour and 27 minutes. Um, this was written by your boy Don Mancini, directed by Tom Holland. Stars Catherine Hicks, Chris Saran, and Alex Vincent. Um, Brad Dourif, of course, does the, the voice primarily of Chucky. A whole bunch of other folks. Plot synopsis brought to you by IMDb, because the back of the box is really just talking about how dope this collector's edition is. It didn't really tell you what the movie is about. 
Um, you sure are lucky you bought this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, IMDb says, a single mother gives her son a much sought-after doll for his birthday only to discover that it is possessed by the soul of a serial killer. Hate it when that happens. Man. Yeah. See it every, every day. time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yet another uh, statistic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those back alley dolls, you know, they've always got something. Something's always wrong with them. It's usually Gosh. just syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then you get a demonic soul. Yeah. <laughs> Pays you money, you takes your chances. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Roll of the dice. <laughs> you gotta stick it to the man somehow. Um, I'm sure we've all seen this movie before. Um, don't assume, we... Bob, Whoop. because you're wrong. <laughs> Juice? I've never seen this before. Oh shit! I didn't oh, even like watch any, it for this cast. I'm just gonna make it up. <laughs> <laughs> now, so we the only ones I have personally seen are the ones that we've covered, which are what Bride of Chucky and the yeah. 2019 the remake? remake. Yeah, that's it. Whew. I am. I am. Were you yeah. sh- very surprised? <laughs> <laughs> well, about the film. Well, we'll get into it. <laughs> okay, okay, because it is a very different vibe than oh, Brian yeah. Chucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So don't well, assume, Bob. Same. Daddy and Daddy are fighting. You guys. I know. My fault. My fault. Well, Daddy and great, Diddy. Rachel, I know. I know you've seen this movie before. Um, yes, I have. <laughs> would you recommend people check this out? Yeah, absolutely. I think that it was interesting because I, I obviously have a soft spot for this franchise, as I said before we started recording. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's hard for me to be subjective, <laughs> but I'm going to try. Uh, it's been years, actually, since I rewatched this first mm-hmm. one. And I was delighted by how much it held up for me because it was interesting to really go back and see how much the characters evolved. Because I think so much of us like our memories of Chucky are much more Mm -hmm. about the later eras. Um, And this one is much less campy, much more unapologetically horror. Uh, And I think if you maybe skew a little towards enjoying horror more than comedy, you should absolutely revisit. There's a reason this is a cult classic. Yeah. Well said. Juice, do you recommend people watch Child's Play? Yeah, so we had covered the two other ones, and I honestly, I just had never had a much particular interest in this, just mainly just because I didn't grow up with them or anything, so didn't have any kind of like nostalgia or any like strong feelings towards it. And just and but through that, it you know, of course, knew the character, which is wild, you know, like how much this character kind of transcends this franchise, and um, and I, I was always kind of curious because. You know, this it's a doll and he's tiny and it would essentially be uh, being like being attacked by like a, a two year old child uh, size wise. And so I was always kind of curious about how they approached it, especially because I knew later it got more and more campy. And, you know, we had covered Bride of Chucky. So like the kills get like outrageous and ridiculous. So I was kind of curious about where it all started, where it began. And, yeah, I was I was honestly kind of like a little skeptical going in. I was like, hey, this is an older film and this is, um, you know, the the killer and stuff. But honestly. Honestly, as the movie kind of like unraveled, I was more and more surprised and like, oh, okay, like and kind of seeing um, and appreciating why this is considered, um, you know, a classic. And so, yeah, I would recommend people check it out. It won me over. I was kind of like a little skeptical and I, it won me over for sure. Uh, nice. Bob, had you seen this before? How many boxes do you have total? Count them up. I won't. I won't do that. <laughs> I won't give you the satisfaction. Um, mm. I have seen this before uh, a couple times, but I think the first time I saw it, I was probably like in my mid to late twenties. It definitely wasn't a movie I saw as a kid. I'm sure it would have like wrecked me as it did everyone else that saw it as a kid. But um, it did <laughs> hold up, like even at an older age with like no nostalgia or anything. Um, first time I watched it, I was like really struck by it. Um, it wasn't as cheesy as I thought it would be because this like tiny little doll running around trying to kill people. Also, like the effects in the '80s, you know, was it gonna look okay? Yeah. Um, it holds up though. I think I think it's pretty damn good, and I definitely recommend uh, watching Child's Play if you have not. Um, that sounds like a, just a recommendation across the board from all of us. Yeah, buddy. nice. Classic for a reason. Yeah. Um, so we are gonna spoil this movie, and here comes your warning. Spoiler warning. (laughs) 
have to use that bump for creature comfort, so I actually have that one on the ready. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> the one that you're going to nail. <laughs> yeah. All right, Rob, do you have a plop synopsis for us today? I do. I have it me. right here. Okay, let's do this. Um, so the movie starts off with Detective Mike Norris chasing a serial killer by the name of Charles Lee Ray throughout the streets of Chicago, chases him into a toy store, uh, Charles performs a voodoo ritual, transferring his soul into a talking good guy doll. Uh, right after that, the store is hit with lightning, causing it to explode. Uh, Mike ends up finding Charles's lifeless body laying next to the doll. Uh, we then jump over to a single mother by the name of Karen. Uh, she buys her six-year-old son uh, by the name of Andy a good guy doll from a homeless man in an alleyway behind her work because she can't afford one otherwise. Uh, she gives it to him for her birthday. And uh, she asks her friend Maggie to babysit him while she has to work late. Uh, the good guy doll attacks Maggie, shoving her out of a window to her death. Um, Detective Mike shows up to investigate, and he considers Andy a suspect. Andy claims his doll killed Maggie, and that the doll's real name is Charles Lee Ray. He just goes by Chucky. Uh, the next day, Chucky instructs Andy to skip school and take him downtown. Chucky sneaks over to his old partner's house and kills him via a gas explosion. Uh, Andy is again considered a suspect in this murder. He's admitted to a psychiatric hospital because of it. Karen returns home with the doll, discovers it's been moving and talking with no batteries in it. Uh, she lights a fire and threatens to throw him in. Chucky violently attacks her, and she tells Detective Mike what happened. Um, he doesn't believe her still. She finds a homeless man that sold her the doll, and he admits he stole the doll from the store that burnt down. Uh, Mike takes Karen home and is attacked by Chucky. He shoots the doll, and it bleeds. Uh, Chucky escapes and visits his voodoo instructor by the name of John, who explains the longer his soul is in the doll, the more human it will become. John refuses to help Chucky until he tortures him with a voodoo doll. John tells Chucky he must transfer his soul into the first person he shared his true identity with, which is Andy. Karen and Mike find John just before he dies, and he tells them they must stab Chucky in the heart to kill him. Chucky finds Andy at the hospital and shocks a doctor to death. Andy escapes and runs home, but Chucky follows. Karen traps Chucky in a fireplace, lighting him on fire. A burnt Chucky chases them throughout the apartment. Karen shoots Chucky several times, blowing several of his limbs off. Mike's oh. partner, Mike's <laughs> partner Jack arrives. I know it's a great, great scene. Uh, Mike's partner Jack arrives, uh, who doesn't believe a doll can be alive until the, the mangled body of Chucky pops out of an air vent and starts to strangle him. Karen manages to pull Chucky off, and Mike shoots him through the heart, killing him. Roll credits. There you go. Does there he? Da, 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 or does yeah. he? I know. <laughs> I wonder if he's gone forever. Um. Probably. He's Spoiler probably alert. Good. Yes. <laughs> we never hear from him again. Mm -hmm. So did, did is this one that you saw when you were younger, Rachel? So I actually saw it a little bit later in life because I am old enough that I, I remember the advertising for this. And cool. it scared me. My parents had bought me a doll like Chucky for Christmas that year. Yeah. And it was not cheap. And it was garbage immediately because I would not allow it to be in the same room as me. So this was kind of a movie that had like lived sort of in infamy for many, many years. And I would like look at the VHS cover and be like, Ooh, no, too scary. And then when I finally did watch it, like I, I loved it immediately and I appreciated it, but like, I have the, I have the childhood trauma, but I did not actually see it till I was a little bit older. And I think that's good. Cause I got, I think I picked up a lot more of the themes than I would have as a kid, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smart yeah, kid. I was wondering about that because the the design of this original Chucky when he's all cleaned up and everything, it does look so much like those dolls that were popular then. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually just recently one of those kind of things popped up where it was like, oh, look at this amazing advertise that they had for these dolls because it was um, I don't remember what they were called. But yeah, it it my looks buddy like and me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah, it's got the song and everything it and the kid carrying that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it I was wondering if it doll. did kill it. Yeah, because it looks <laughs> so similar. Yep. No more Teddy Ruxpins, no more crickets, no more my buddy mm. and me, all of it. It was a wrap when this came out. Interesting. I wonder if that something like that happened today, if that would be potential for any kind of lawsuit, because it is so similar in design. 
Yeah, probably. I feel like people pr- most likely would end up getting sued. I don't know if anything would come from it, but you'd yeah. definitely be sued. Hmm. That's very that's interesting. interesting. I was watching. Yeah, I mean, I was very curious about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they should have just started making Chucky dolls and like you know horror nerds yeah. would start Switching buying those. Around, and, yeah, you know, yeah. Yes. They were smart. Yeah. <laughs> They'd have to be huge nerds. <laughs> I was actually on a plane recently and like a, I don't know, 19 year old kid walked on with a Chucky doll, mm. but the Chucky doll wow. had all of these like gold necklaces on. What? I, I, was fly- <laughs> I was flying from, from Oakland to um, New Mexico. And coincidentally, when I flew back, he was on the plane again wow. with the Chucky Damn. doll. Damn. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But I was like, that kid is cool. <laughs> he must have been a trap rapper, I assume. <laughs> mm-hmm. A what? Uh, I'm cool uh, enough to know what that is. Uh, I bet, I bet he was. I'm just placing yeah. my bets. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, I, that. So going off of that, I feel like everyone on that plane probably recognize and know who that doll is, oh. despite like not being more of... fans. As he went through the plane, you heard like whispers. Of yeah. Chucky, 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 yeah. Chucky, Chucky, Chucky. <laughs> and I was definitely a part of the chorus. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my I God, think I that's him. what's very interesting to me about this franchise is like I said, we, I mean, we covered, I guess we covered the first one. 2019 was the first time we covered it for the remake. Yeah. And that was the first Chucky movie I'd seen. I feel like maybe there were some on like some cable television at some point that I've seen maybe pieces of. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just it's it's kind of like shocking to me how infamous this character is. I mean, as far as like visual like recognizability, I yeah. feel like probably more people would be likely to pick him out and know his name at least than maybe somebody might fuck up, you know, like Jason Voorhees, you know, they, they mm-hmm. know the, the mask and recognize that it's a horror icon, but name to like visual representation. I feel like Chucky is like a lock for the top five for sure. Like horror mm-hmm. icons. If we were uh, which tearing, is I think it's S. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Well, I mean, yeah. part of it, I think, is he's managed to kind of like transcend generation. You know, what everybody knows Michael because of the the new films, right? Mm. But for the most part, Jason has kind of fallen off. Freddie has kind of fallen off in terms of putting out new content where we have this whole new series that's done really, really well that I think it's reinvigorated mm. the the brand. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's like a whole giant subgenre of like creepy ass doll in horror and Chucky's like the mm-hmm. doll of mm-hmm. you know it, yeah and that that show is I think it just got renewed for a third season um mm-hmm. I watched the first season I was like pretty engaged with it um I hadn't seen the second season yet have you have you been keeping up with that yeah yeah, yeah. I mean like it's queer so I've covered it a lot for work um yeah. and yeah yeah absolutely and it's it's so camp and so fun and such a if you like the franchise it's such a love letter to the franchise and it has allowed don mancini to kind of be unleashed in terms of things he wants to talk about (laughs) and ways that he wants to talk about it and it's it yeah if you're a fan of the franchise it is absolutely required watching i think cool nice Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah that's another interesting thing about this franchise is like don mancini what i guess excluding the the remake or whatever but like he's been able to just be a part of it the entirety of it like he's Mm -hmm. and it's all canon like it's all there's no Mm -hmm. like crazy branches shooting off like halloween there's like eight different ways to watch that that franchise but like this is just like one single through line which is super rare um yeah i don't know if i can think of another maybe like puppet master it's yeah, kind, pop- kind of that way. Well, I mean, so it, I was if I was thinking about movies that came around this time, I mean, I feel like Puppet Master, I remember it, but I don't feel like anybody else kind of would. Um, you yeah. start talking about, you know, how he has kind of overcome the maybe even the struggles of the time of that. There were like similar things, you know, but Chucky has definitely come out on top in that aspect. And yeah. this is much, I mean, I think we, didn't we cover the original Puppet Master like way back in the day? And we were all like, mm, yeah, not, so super, not super hot on it. Yeah. <laughs> this one definitely Are holds you telling up me better. a full moon feature isn't good? How <laughs> yeah. <you>, sir? <laughs> Blasphemy. Wow. Charles Band is the, I don't know. <laughs> Here come know, the yes. haters. Oh, <laughs> yeah. here we go. <laughs> yeah. This the the effects in those puppet master movies are are, are kind of rough but like in you know 1988 like watching this movie i think the vast majority of what you see on screen really holds up 
Mm-hmm. Maybe with the exception of like you hit his the, the doll's mouth doesn't quite line up perfectly with some of the words here and there, yeah. but like outside of that, I don't know that I have any major complaints. Mm-hmm. Um, it, like when he's running around, it looks great. Uh, when, whenever like the big reveal where he finally starts talking to Karen and like it, he says some heinous shit to her, like it's still really effective and scary. Like it, it actually, this little mm-hmm. like harmless looking doll is terrifying in that moment. Um, and then the end, whenever he's all like burnt to shit, I think that looks even cooler. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Terminator ass Chucky coming after you, like it's super fucking scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I appreciate the evolution of the look too because something that kind of falls away as that go is the mythology around how he's becoming more human, but mm-hmm. it allows sort of the, sh- the the subtle shift in the design. And by the time he's in that elevator and the lady's like, "Ooh, that's an ugly fucking doll," he really does like the sweet little face has morphed in a way that is subtle and really sinister. And mm-hmm. I, you know, I I almost wish I had seen it as a kid because I can't even imagine what like nightmare fuel those moments would have been. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. They I do like the design shifts because it does look very ugly, but also too the texture it does start to look like skin and for me it was it had this like psychological texture grossity to it where I was like I almost can feel it by looking at it like I can almost imagine what it feels like um so i was really actually impressed with that morph because not only is it just ugly and it helps to kind of be like okay now this doll is actually talking and so i'm sure you know that helps with uh with that aspect of it um from a practicality standpoint but but just from like a, a I don't know, like getting into this movie and like kind of falling into it. I Those things were working really well for me because, um, you know, like I said before, going into this, I was like, how are they going to make this doll? Not even necessarily necessarily scary. I don't know if mm-hmm. I was scared by this movie, uh, but I it was effective. I was like, how are they going to make it effective? Of How is it not going to be so cheesy always for this little doll to be running around? And part of it was right. that that texture morph and stuff like that where it just started to fit the horror aesthetic more where it's just like gross kind of and just like unsettling um i I was pretty impressed with that actually Mm -hmm. i think it also really effectively uses utilizes um our ideas about who are is worthy of believing so so much of the tension is about watching these characters that you know are speaking the truth being totally ignored and it leaves people vulnerable to be attacked by him and so Mm -hmm. there's that kind of tension i think adds to the element of fear um you know that it's like a woman and a child who especially in 1988 were not necessarily people who were going to have a lot of like a societal um like belief around the things that they say to be taken seriously so Mm -hmm. i think it's smart in in that way as well yeah Yeah. and it works for the character too because that just keeps elevating at first it's a child nobody believes a child and then the mother Mm -hmm. and then nobody believes the mother and even the Mm -hmm. cop you know as we see even with the cop at the end he's like don't touch he's like even given just like simple instructions don't touch it you know and Mm -hmm. nobody's gonna believe it that that's a reality and so it allows this doll to just like keep elevating and elevating and elevating and actually it was there was a really good scene with that kid where he's scared of the doll coming and he's in the room and he's crying and he's like don't leave me alone and i was like damn this is actually pretty solid yeah 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 Yeah. later on it's funny because it circles back in some of the later films uh alex vincent stars in them (laughs) and Mm. there's like some great beats about like his childhood trauma and what a first date is like (laughs) with him (laughs) (laughs) not good (laughs) not swipe left Let's do a doll for yourself. fetish. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a really solid I'll child like a actor. fixer upper, you know. Oh yeah. god. <laughs> I'll fix you. Uh, the, I want to yeah, say that's a... not relatable, but touche, <laughs> <laughs> my friend. <laughs> it happens. He's a great child actor. When the movie starts off and you see him putting breakfast together for his mom. And he burns that toast and then throws like a half a pound of country crock on top of it. I, I don't know. It's hilarious and super endearing to the character. You're like, oh, this sweet kid is just trying to make make breakfast for his mama. Yeah, he he does a good job though. Like you, you're 
you're really mostly following him throughout the movie and to like place a movie like kind of on this kid's shoulders i don't know it's like a bit of a gamble like not you know not every every kid actor is really like hitting him out of the park you know but i think he does a good job for sure it's cool that he's like still involved in the franchise too like i believe every like brad durov Mm-hmm. is still involved his daughter mm-hmm. alex vincent like there yeah there's everybody everybody that's interesting it's not like just don and C. I don't know i gotta i'm just keep coming back to that show i gotta watch the rest of that show you really should watch the rest of it it's yeah. pretty great it's pretty, it's the second season is high camp so if, if oh, depending right. on your toleration for camp maybe it you know mm. but it, it is because it takes place in a convent <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, so, as far as the timeline of this franchise go, is Bride of Chucky the fourth one? Is that right? Fourth. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. how does the ori- like original trilogy then? What is what kind of tone does it strike? Because I know there's this big kind of even Randy's question last week. Nobody called in, but like, oh, do you prefer the uh, you know, like the more grounded Chucky horror based or like the more ridiculous over the top kills and camp based? So, um, how does how does like two and three strike tone wise? I mean, you can speak to this probably too, Bob, but I feel like they are the more like horror specific like but the the third one when we get to the military school it's a little more camp then there was that break and then don mancini took over directing and we got high camp and then there's the third era where it was like cult and curse Mm -hmm. where it's leaning back into the horror and some really bad cgi and then (laughs) yeah and then the series which pulls everything all of those eras into the same canon Mm, okay interesting yeah yeah the original trilogy is more of a straight ahead horror like trilogy i guess and then it, yeah they take it off the rails uh with bride and seed for sure <laughs> in okay. a pretty major way mm-hmm. um yeah I, I i think um brad Dorif's like voice acting in this is like super iconic like i can't yes. imagine like in in the same way that like freddy krueger like you don't want to see anybody else play Freddy Krueger other than Robert England. Like you don't really want anybody else to voice Chucky other than Brad Dorif. It's like one of those like connections that you don't ever want to be broken. Like, I don't know. His voice is horrific. Like, what about Mark Hamilton, mom? Eh, Mark Hamilton <laughs> did a fine job, but like, <laughs> it's not quite the same. Yeah. I mean, I think it speaks to Brad Dorif that even Mark Hamill wasn't able to Mark elevate. Hamill, oh my god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the but, musical yeah, about Mark Hamill? Yeah, Mark yeah, Hamill exactly. Hamill. <laughs> the, the child's play musical. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, I, don't, are you, I don't know if this is in your trivia, but you know there were other actors that they considered for the role. But I won't say them if they're in trivia. Outside of Mark it. Hamill or outside of Mark Brad. Hamilton? Mark yeah, Mark, Hamilton, my boy Tom. Mark Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Bob, is that in your trivia? Because I don't I, want to spoil your trivia. No, go for it. I don't, I don't so, have it. Uh, Gary Oldman was oh, considered. Yeah. That'd be wow. a good one. John Lithgow was was considered. Uh, okay. And one that I think might have been interesting, but I'm glad it's Brad Dorf because I love him so much, which is was Andrew Divoff, who was the Wishmaster. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever see Wishmaster? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. That, he good. has quite a voice. Mm, he does. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, for Rachel's takeover month, I'm just gonna pick Wishmaster <laughs> <one, two, three. laughs> <laughs> because it is a shame that you guys <laughs> do not know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's do it. Mm-hmm. The poll is one movie, Wishmaster. <laughs> Wishmaster. Yes. I mean, it is the movie that has uh jason Voorhees, Candyman, and i want to say oh freddy krueger all of those actors are in that film wow Damn. i'm looking mm-hmm. it up right now mm-hmm. and it also has one of the hmm. it has ted Raimi in it as well in this mm-hmm. ah, mm-hmm. our boy ted Raimi. damn yeah That's a lot There's of There's some hitters. trivia for you Caitlin, are you listening? That's a question for next trivia <laughs> night. <laughs> that would be a good ass question. I would obviously fail. <laughs> I got nothing. Um, huh. I don't, we should probably talk a bit about old Chris Randon, right? Detective Mike. Um, he's uh, he does a pretty so. good job in this. He's like, I don't know, his his character is really just there to be like, ah, 
I don't believe you. Like, it's, you know, they, they don't give him like a whole lot of range. I mean, towards the end, he kind of, you know, has to start believing because he's almost stabbed in the dick by a doll and he like, you know, can't really unsee that. Um, <laughs> and yeah. yeah, I think he does a pretty good job. Like, I, I, Friday Night came before this, I think. If same I'm remembering director. Pro- yeah. Same director, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I believe it came before. He had a lot more to do in Friday Night. That was kind of like his bag, but. I don't know. I think it, making the jump from like the bad guy in Fright Night to like the good guy in this movie. I don't know. I guess it shows a little bit of his range, but yeah, he. I think he yeah. does a fine enough job here. Yeah, it's he's fine. The character itself is not particularly interesting to me. It's nothing to do with him. Uh, but I yeah. I did like the approach of the single mother struggling that like kind of hit um like struck a chord because if it, it did when he's making the breakfast at the beginning and him also like wanting the kind of expensive toy and his mom being like. Ah you know she tries to get him mm-hmm. like as close as possible within a range and she's like scrambling for it and like having to leave work that just all really worked um and even like though i guess really my biggest beef and it, it's kind of part of the time i guess a little bit but my biggest beef was i really liked how her friend kind of stepped up and was you know helping watch the kid because that felt like really true as well and her being the first death i kind of wanted it to hit harder because Mm -hmm. because obviously she had like gone so much out of her way to help this mom which like really connects people i think in a certain way so um her death was kind of like oh she died oh my god and i was like (laughs) i wanted that one to kind of hit harder you know because i felt the bond i I thought that 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 aspect worked really well um Mm -hmm. so i like the whole like single mom kind of aspect just struggling to get by It, it worked for the story for me Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah um there's that scene in the beginning where where karen's like asking if her friend can cover her shift and the the, the manager's like absolutely it's like her son's birthday she's like i just want to like celebrate my son's birth- birthday or whatever and he's just like such a like blowhard about it for seemingly no reason at all like why why would that be i don't know that just like the 80s i don't know i don't, know. I mean, I don't I think that's just the 80s ideas. my guy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're Max. probably right. Max. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is kind of Mancini's anti-capitalist film. The film yeah. started like its origin story was it started as a, a film about like an anti-consumerism and advertising film. Um, and then kind of evolved into what it is now, you know, into more of a horror film. But I think that that's some of that DNA of that is still in that scene. And also the movie was originally three hours long, the first cut. Oh, and I wow. wonder how much of it was like speaks to what you're talking about, not necessarily seeing more of that relationship. Cause I think you're right. I do think that of the kills, that's the one that you're kind of like, okay, well that yeah. sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, uh, in terms of like the themes that really hit me as I was watching, I've watched this multiple times over the years, but the one that really struck me is like, how effective an allegory this is for um bringing in like an abusive step parent which was Mm. interesting that i didn't necessarily pick up on the past like i always picked up on like like paternal isolation because i know so much of so much of the franchise in general is at first an unpacking around his queerness for don mancini and then becomes a celebration of otherness as it goes on Uh, And so I kind of always focused in on the way that there was an absent father, like we know that he's passed away. But this time I started like really thinking about the role that Chucky takes on when he enters the family. Like he is very much like he comes in as a friend and there is a desire to please him. And then he sort of isolates by killing off the friend. He isolates the family, Mm -hmm. cuts them off from their support systems. And then there is kind of the ways in which he gaslights the child and the mother and, you know, creates an isolation between the two of them as well and, and breaks a trust between them as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I kind of, I I don't know, I, I kind of clued in on it this time and I haven't fully unpacked my thoughts around it, but I do think there is some allegory there about bringing in a step parent. That I thought yeah. was interesting. That is really interesting because actually in considering it in that way, that's actually very interesting. And I didn't consider that at all. Zero percent. But as you were talking, like these kind of light bulbs were going off because I feel like in that way, it kind of approaches the way of 
kind of that if you take that psychology behind it but then it approaches the mom in a still kind of more like sympathetic type of way where Mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of the time is when if you bring a partner into the home and it ends up you know like you said at first it's friendly and it's it's all uh, okay and then like it's they start to use the child in in forms of like negative effects, um, not even necessarily abuse, but could be abuse. But, you know, it's always like attacking the mom. How could you bring somebody like this mm. in to like mm-hmm. hurt your child? But in this way, it kind of still like there's not as much of that. You're not necessarily like, mom, how could you buy this toy for your son? Right. It's right. you're more focused on the evil that is the entity that is doing the And that's. That's really wild to be able to capture that and be like, no, this is how it should be. You know, the mom can Mm -hmm. take some blame for not trusting her son or not, you know, fully investing the time to to hear his worries and opinions about the situation. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But um, but yeah, to put all of the blame on the entity itself, not on the mother. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Chuck, Chuck also, is the worst stepfather you ever had. Yeah. yeah. I also think that there's some like commentary around like systemic breakdown as well, because the police also don't believe her when she comes forward mm-hmm. there, yeah. you know? So I think you can see some sort of yeah. allusions to that as well, which I was anything that's criti- critical of the system. I'm like, yummy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's it. Very interesting. That's not something I picked on at all, but something that like, as soon as you said it, all the light bulbs were going off and I was like, wow, that's really strong actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Telling the kid like fucked up things behind closed doors and like bringing them downtown to a, you know, crack house when mom's yeah. at work and like, yeah. Well, also him, uh, the thing that really like immediately struck in my mind was when he says, he tells the kid, no one's going to believe you. He tells him honestly. Yeah. Yeah. He's not even necessary. He is manipulating him, obviously. But mm-hmm. even as a kid, it's like, ah, you know, nobody's going to believe you. So mm-hmm. you're, yeah. you know, to isolate them like you were saying, wow, that's really interesting. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's it- like such a classic tactic, right? You know, manipulation yeah. tactic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't even bother. They won't believe you. Yeah. Yeah. That had not if occurred you to me. You all hurt your mother. Like these are things yeah. that like, yeah. users classically yeah. say. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. Fucking Chucky. That definitely hadn't occurred to me at all. The only like I guess metaphor allegory that that it's pretty on the nose. It's like I don't know, the way companies like have and continue to advertise to children like directly. Yeah. Just like totally taking full advantage of these kids. Um, and then like having them work their parents over to like, you know, spend over budget on these things that, that they don't need whatsoever. Um, I don't know. That's like a very service level reading of the movie, of course, because that's just exactly what happens. But well, it, right. yeah, it is because honestly, that's something that resonates with me here too, because it's so that is something that's very prevalent in america and it's obvious for us to like look back now and even when you can look mm-hmm. at things like shows like transformers that were so prevalent that yeah. take on that idea but and it, it exists in korea but in a different way and it's weird to see it like flipped because it's easy for us to like look at it and kind of like we've had decades now to kind of like pick it apart and criticize it But in the form of like Korea, it exists, but in the ideas of education. So for instance, like with, so when I'm teaching adults, um, one of the, the conversations that I've had with people is the idea of potentially like having children. I'm considering having children. Oh, like what's, um, your, like, why don't you maybe want to have kids? Well, they cost a lot of money. Well, like, why do they cost a lot of money? Well, they have to go to school. And like, well, school's free. Well, not the private schools. So in Korea, it's all about like privatized education, not necessarily like the main school, but after school programs. And to the point where even like kids, um, like now it's like go, sending them to like this English kindergarten. So they get ahead and, you know, they go to the best schools to give them the best opportunities. And this pressure and pressure and pressure builds on people to where I say, like, if I say to somebody, you don't have to send them to a English kindergarten. Like you don't have to send them to these like overindulgent, you know, after school academy stuff like that. And they're like, Yes, I do. Like the pressure of the identity of it reflects on you as a parent, as a person, like almost like how could you not 
take care of your kids in this failing. way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more failing, which hits even harder when it's the single mom and stuff like that. And so it's interesting, this aspect of how it can exist in different forms. It's not just like, oh, buy me this and I want this mm -hmm. and oh, I want a new iPhone or I want these things. But like in like the moral structure of society of right. what is a good parent? Like, how do you properly take care of your kids and like what kind of pressure that puts on you in your own personal relationship with your own personal child? That's wild. It's so insidious, too, because I think it's so much easier to see it and villainize it when it's about consumerism and buying yeah. objects as opposed to, like, providing an education. Like, there is some level of, like, that's a more elevated endeavor, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if it's the same kind of social pressure and the same kind of financial incentive... <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, that's what's kind of like, you're right. It's more because you're like, of course, I want my kid to get an education. Right. You know? I mean, people exploit that, you know, still the capitalist yeah. aspect of is it? Well, I mean, don't you want like mm -hmm. this? And like, don't you? And that's good for your kid. Right. And like, mm -hmm. technically, I mean, kind of like, yes, in a way, of course, I want my child to be educated in the best possible ways. But to right. to exploit that and use that as a moral pressure um it's crazy and then of course single mothers in korea have like this huge stigma and pressure and so even that kind of stuff it's it's um it was kind of sticking out to me in in this way where i was like man that like mm. exists just in different forms and like the the i felt that i think that's why i kind of really resonated with me with the mom because i'm like man she's like doing her best like even like I'll spend thirty dollars on it. Like I gotta, I gotta get it because yeah. I can't even be with my son on his birthday. Like I have to work in order to take care of him. Yeah. But like I have this obligation for to like get him what he needs and what he wants and stuff. It's like man, that's mm -hmm. that's a rough spot to be in. Yeah. Oh my god, I love that read. That's so <laughs> interesting. Oh my god, that's so interesting. Look at a global yeah. discussion about child play. <laughs> Y'all thought we had nothing to say about child play. We're taking it international. That's, that's wild that people feel so obligated to send their kids to those after school programs that, that it would keep them from having children at all. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's I mean, nuts. because it's seen as like the major like price factor of having kids, honestly, because if you consider that I feel the pressure one to like register them probably when they're born for this waiting list to get wow. into this top tier English kindergarten so that they can have higher like so my kids would go to so if you're in elementary school, you go to math classes after school or English classes after school that are designed for middle school. So that like you can stay ahead and it just like stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks because it all builds to essentially what is their SATs, which completely dictate what university you get into, which has a huge stigma around it of like social like hierarchy of like, oh, I just went to this university. I went to Harvard. I went to Yale. I went to these things. And it's just like, how could you deny your kid that opportunity to to have the potential to to because it I mean it could essentially affect their entire lives for sure, you know? for yeah. sure. um so yeah and it, it really but let's does not just it, fix yeah. the system let's no just yeah adding, exactly <laughs> in yeah. and out purchases like, yeah <laughs> yeah I mean that's also just an insane amount of pressure to put onto a child like you're going to Harvard yeah. that's where you're like not everybody's cut out to go to Harvard you know yeah. it's pretty exclusive even if you are cut out like it's it's difficult to get in that's mm -hmm. that's crazy crazy but yeah I, yeah i felt for the mom like hardcore like i really yeah. I, and i think that's a good foundation to build this at least first you know not having seen the other films um building this first foundation because the kid's so so little too and i think that's his, him watching the cartoons alone too at the beginning while he's making her breakfast like that's what's teaching him you know his mom is asleep she has to work just to take care of him and i feel like a, a lot of people could probably associate with this too is like the television is his companion it is his instruction for society even he is mimicking like and that's what's just trying to, to sell him on guy. something yeah it's like <laughs> well if you you know if you, you'll be happy when you have a friend like me and mm -hmm. um so like just that kid being alone 
trying to take care of his mom as such a tiny little child that is just learning basic things about the word world from the television um it, it set it set the stage really well for me mm-hmm. to yeah. care about these absolutely. people yeah 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 absolutely mm-hmm. did the did the aspects of like the voodoo stuff sort of like feel <laughs> weird to you guys at all in this it did not yeah. age great no. <laughs> i mean no, not really I mean, it is partially responsible for at least my understanding of voodoo for a long time. And I think was very, had an impact on cultural zeitgeist around it. And it's easy to forget that that's like an actual religion, Mm. you know, like that is, and it's not like a major religion. So like when people do send ups of religion, I am not like, like clutching my pearls. Like Mm. I don't care, but there is some degree in which that is such a minority religion that you kind of are like, it's a little in 2023. I mean, it didn't ruin the experience for me, but it definitely made me feel the age more so than pretty much anything else in the film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think anybody in like 88 was watching this and saying like, that's probably not real voodoo. Let me go do my research. <laughs> they're just like, oh man, that's they're possessing people and you can, you know, grab a voodoo doll and, you know, snap people's legs and stuff. Like, that I don't being know. Like, said, that said, that snapping of the leg stuff was pretty great. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty a cool. great scene. <laughs> yeah, so another read my... is voodoo's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I I think that's the only thing about it. I I think it's the only thing that makes me not. It's tonally different. Mm, mm-hmm. You know, that is the hints of the campiness or whatever. Uh, because I feel like everything else is grounded as far as it can be. Um, mm-hmm. you know, like you said, even like when considering those ideas of um of you know the the step parent or you know, a partner coming in, abusive partner, mm-hmm. um, those are all very dark. And like I said, the kid being in the hospital alone and fearing for his life and um that's the only aspect and they needed to explain it but it just is kind of like over the top wonky i mean i guess there is a man possessing a doll i mean that the con the core concept <laughs> itself kind of lends to yeah. that tone but other than that um i think yeah, it's just the only great. thing that's like tonally kind of sticks out you know it's like mm-hmm. mm, yeah. yeah i wasn't like crazy about it but also because of its age it's easy enough to kind of say like ah, it's part of the time yeah, yeah. Hand wave, hand yeah. Wave. <laughs> yeah. i guess like from what i was reading the original concept for this didn't have voodoo whatsoever mm. it was supposed to have like a, a a doll that was like as lifelike as possible with like latex skin and i guess they were actually gonna have blood in it or something that resembled blood and Andy was going to do like a, a blood pact with his like new doll and his blood would get into the doll system, causing him to like actually come alive or whatever. Maybe um, in 18, 1988, we don't do blood pact, brother. Right. Like, maybe <laughs> yeah. No fluid exchange, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, I yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. That, that'd be a whole nother read on this. So it's going to be a doll that into. was built with blood in it. Yeah. That's according okay. to the trivia. You say that like it's weird. <laughs> Is that a problem? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that doesn't exist. Well, True I horror for, for Justin. Yeah, seriously. Justin Ooh. loves blood. He's a big fan. The idea... Oh, I do know this about yeah. you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. This we you. this was covered in Infinity Pool. Of course. Yes. Oh, and yeah, you talked and... about fainting lust in the in Plug It Up. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just my uh, thing now <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. i did i will say it had been enough years that i had forgotten that there was a whole sort of like candy man light scene where we saw all of the murals but it was a red door of uh, yeah <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah yeah i know you're all trying to block it out but i'm not letting it happen okay <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are not, this erasure is not occurring yeah. today on straight well, chilling <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so so that scene was actually really funny to me too because mm-hmm. you know when the <laughs> when the cop first goes there, you know, there she, the mom, when she's kind of onto this, she's begging him like, go to his apartment and just seen. he's like, I've already been there. I was like, you've already been and seen this ridiculous mural. (laughs) And you didn't even check on this voodoo man. (laughs) Like you didn't even think that that was maybe worth checking into. 
just a normal apartment. <laughs> Every day, everything apartment. seems in place I mean, here. You know? <laughs> we haven't actually seen the cops' apartment. Maybe it wasn't. Sure, like yeah. mm, seems pretty normal to me. <laughs> it's just him, like <laughs> naked murals of like cuffing people. You don't know. You don't know. Hell yeah, <laughs> Brandon gets we freaky. Kink shame. We can ask. No. We, we can kink ask why, but we cannot yeah. kink shame. Kink ask why. <laughs> why kink? <laughs> Hell yeah. Handcuffs, blood, whatever you're into. Go nuts. Uh, cool. Yeah, I don't know. Any other major things you guys want to touch on uh, before we rate Child's Play? Well, so you kind of, that's that ending scene too, I think is pretty fantastic um, yeah. about it's, it strikes that good chord between, I think the horror, I mean, it definitely leans more into the horror, but it just how it kind of keeps coming. It's got that touch of camp going on to it. Um, it's a good blend. I like it. Um, it is a great scene of him. Be even I like the well okay even when he turns his kind of head um and starts talking and rolls under the couch and yeah. she like threatens to throw him in the fire and shit like that I that was a really fun moment for me um like a good Chucky moment yeah and then yeah him strolling down the hallway all burnt up and like just keeps on trucking um that was pretty good I like that yeah I mean, I love yeah. it when he's his head is giving orders to his body and he's just like, choke him, kill him, don't let him go. So good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The uh there's... this whenever she first opens up the little battery pouch and like re realizes that there's no batteries in them, like I, the tension that that builds is just mm -hmm. so good. I love that scene so 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 much. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the, the whole end sequence too, the chase around the apartment is absolutely fantastic. When the headless, one-armed body of Chucky grabs that other cop by the throat and they like, mm. can ba it takes everything they can do to get him off. Like, that's a strong-ass doll, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Love that end scene. It's so good. Yeah. I also really love, I mean, all, I love, we touched on it briefly, but I actually really love the car scene where he's stabbing <laughs> through the seat. All of that, like, I think it successfully shows how he could be a threat, like when he's able to get under the seat and hold mm -hmm. down the accelerator and those kinds of things. I think mm -hmm. it capitalizes on instead of, instead of you being like, I'm just going to like yeet this doll off a cliff. <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> You could see how using the his the scale could make him actually pretty threatening because he can get places where you cannot get, but he can still cause bodily harm. I think mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's, it's well done. Yeah. I agree. I like that too because not being familiar with this franchise, that's always the kind of thing. It's like it's a doll, just throw it out the window Yeet. or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you and Yeet, um, roll credits. <laughs> yeah, but now on so a negative for me in that same aspect because I was thinking that I did like the idea of him being under the pedals and affecting it that way and having the knife go up through the seat and stuff like that. I don't like him choking him uh because this doll should have that's no right. weight and even if they're like yeah he's turning human and you want to explain with voodoo it's like that's not the aspect you should be playing on because that's the kind of eye rolly moments for me where it's mm -hmm. like that's okay true. you just like it's a doll you know it should have essentially no even if it has fleshy weight to it it would be a two-year-old child so um but so i feel like yeah i'm maybe moving forward they highlight more of those moments i definitely know in bride of chucky where they take the scenes where he's definitely more stealthy and he's able to get in like smaller spaces mm -hmm. and stuff that makes more mm -hmm. sense so that was the only kind of moment where i was like okay this is what i thought i might be expecting and like i don't like that so fair fair yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, let's go and rate this thing. Let's do it. Um, out of five, uh, Rachel, why don't you kick us off? How do you feel about Child's Play? I love this movie. It's just, I, I, I understand it is an imperfect movie, so I will not give it a five, even though subjectively I want to. So I'm going to give it a four and a half because I think it it is the best version of this kind of movie that you could hope to get. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I think that's totally fair. Four and a half from Rachel. Juice. What about you? Yeah, I think I would say that this movie won me over. And I think even this discussion has bumped it up higher because I didn't even consider any like what you were saying, Rachel. And I, I think that really um, struck a chord with me and like made a lot of sense. And I think it's uh, is a well worked theme into this. Um, and yeah, so I I. I was kind of going into this a little skeptical thinking like, ah, I don't think it's going to hold up or I don't know how it's going to hold up. And each kind of like little beat, I was like, oh, okay, I see. Okay. I see. 
Um, and so I was pleasantly surprised by it, honestly. And um, I do think, you know, it's one of those movies going back and looking at dated things. You know, some people even go back and say, oh, it's hard for me to watch Halloween like younger people because ah, it's not scary to me. It's not dated. And I could definitely see some of that in this. Um, the voodoo stuff does not really hold up well. Um, it does lend to a cool. I do like the kind of bendy arms and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. But, um, uh, you know, it does have like some problems also, too. Like I, I was kind of craving for a little bit more of the emotional weight of the friend dying. Um, I thought that kill was fine, though. Um and uh but yeah i just kind of want a little bit more weight from it but i did like the escalation of like people not believing somebody else even like when it gets to the highest chain um some kills were cool even like there was tension like even when the little boys on the bus like just going to the bad part of town i was like oh this little child he shouldn't be there <laughs> um so there's good like situational tension too um i liked this movie but yeah it's it's i guess most of its flaws are just based around its kind of datedness i guess so i would give this one i'll give it a 3.75 3.75 well, low but okay i know <laughs> 3.75 you're just talking about how much you love it i then, well yeah, yeah i uh, I mean, it's it amazing, to, hilarious. Yeah, too. Well, I also <laughs> just watched it like yesterday, so I feel like I feel like this could easily rise up there. You always have to give room to grow, you know. So, um, Bob, out of five, even me out a scotch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'll even you out. I, I left room to grow when we did Alien, so you know I'll I'll, I'll balance the scales here. Bob did not. Five. <laughs> yes. How dare you? Bob thinks it's a four yes. point five. <gasps> oh, <laughs> I left never room to grow. Never insulted in my life. It's growing. I left the room. It's growing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I. I kind of love this movie um it, it is a, it's a little rough around the edges sure um a, a lot of movies from the 80s are um but i, I mean it, it sort of, it sort of adds some charm to it in a way even if like the voodoo stuff is a little cheesy and like maybe isn't exactly treated well in a respectable manner like it's of the time and like hopefully people are aware that that's not really what voodoo is about now um uh, I think that the acting in this is solid, man. Um, Alex Vincent does a great job. Brad Dourif's voice acting is iconic. I mean, the the design of Chucky is iconic. Um, like the 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 way the effects hold up is just like really just kind of slaps you in the face. Like, you know, the, the scene when he wakes up is is terrifying. It's just yeah, it all holds together pr pretty dang well. There's some like decent kills. Like that we I don't think we really got into the um. The doctor who gets like shocked in the head. Um, the uh, the gas I kill. I forgot about that kill. That was a really cool kill, actually. Yeah, pretty gruesome. He's like bleeding out of his eyes and his mouth, and like it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty messed up. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, the gas explosion was good. Um, the, the babysitter falling out of a window is like pretty damn tragic. She like lands on a car and it, the windows blow out. Um, yeah, there's some solid kills. It's also just like a nice tight 90 minute movie. Like it's it's pretty like straight ahead. It knows what it's doing. There's not a whole lot of fluff. Um, but I think at the same time, there's there's some threads that you can kind of pull at if you want to get a little more out of the plot. Um, or you can just watch it as a straight ahead slasher movie with a possessed doll. You know, like it works on both levels. Um, yeah, I, this is a five for me. I'm just going to do it. Oh, I'm wow. Gonna, I'm going to give it a five. Wow. Love right. it. So, I gotta balance it out up. gotta balance it out i <laughs> will say to be fair though i kind of came i you know coming into an episode i generally have an idea about where it's gonna go unless a discussion like i was prepared to kind of come in here around like somewhere between a 2.5 and 3 honestly so Weebly, you guys bump me up you know a significant amount so good job you don't need randy bumps we got yeah. Rachel and Bob yeah. bumps. <laughs> <laughs> we're bumping you up cool um <laughs> Yeah, that's going to put our aggregate at a 4.4. 4. Not, Not bad. Room to grow. Um, so yeah, let's get into our Rotten Tomatoes segment. Uh, juice. Certified. 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 Certified.
All right, I am taking over Randy's responsibilities, and I had this, and then switched it off to look up Mark Hamilton. So let me go back. <laughs> Why isn't he coming up on IMDb? Where is Hamilton? <laughs> what is this I'm nonsense? Patreon special. Great chill and musical, the story <laughs> of Mark Hamilton <laughs> in iambic pentameter. <laughs> yes. You're welcome. You're rich now. <laughs> Trey Mark, straight All improv. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, let's play our Rotten Tomatoes game. This is normally a Randy segment, but I'm taking over this week. Um, mm-hmm. So we are going to go around the table. Rachel and Rob are going to try to guess first uh, the critic scores on Rotten Tomatoes, and then we'll hop over to the audience score soon. So this one has 50, only 50 reviews um, for the critic score. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, 50. So, uh, Rachel, I'll let you go first. What do you think the overall average score is? So, I feel like this is a movie that wasn't necessarily appreciated in its time. I'm telling you, I've been down a rabbit hole with this, so <laughs> you'll have to forgive me. But I think, and it was like fresh out of the like slasher era i feel like there's been there was backlash at the time around like the violence um and i know it was like kind of like the supernatural era of slasher so i feel like critics at the time were not appreciating this to the degree that it deserved so i'm guessing like 65 65 okay yeah all right bob critic score out of 100 where do you think they landed i'm gonna go higher than 60 I'll take an 80, please. 65 and 80. Let me do some quick maths. I feel like I'm terrible at this game. Whoa. Okay. (laughs) So quick maths. I'm pretty sure I got this right. So Rachel is going to take this one. So both of you were close, but on opposite ends. So out of 50 reviews, the critic score is 72%. So wow. that puts Rachel seven points away and Bob eight points away. Damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes. Rachel wow. finally working in my favor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm kind of surprised. Well, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, but I'm really surprised at how low the reviews are on this one. Um, yeah, that's not a lot. Yeah, so um, I'll look at some reviews later and see if there's anything funny about it. But let's hop over to the audience score and see what they think. This one has, this is back in the old school days of Rotten Tomatoes where anybody could jump on the audience score. So it has over 250,000 ratings Damn. from the users. Yeah, Bob, why don't you kick us off out of 100%? I think it's going to be higher than the critics. Um. I'll take a 78, please. 78. Okay, Ooh. Rachel. 78 is pretty high because I feel like there are a lot of haters in the audience, but I also feel like, it, sorry, my cat is attacking. Um, <laughs> there also There is a pretty solid fandom for this franchise overall. What was your 78? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be that dickhead. Seventy nine. Oh, shit. <laughs> One dollar. Well, Damn I will it. say, Rachel, that's gonna that's gonna cost you because it's actually wow. Now this is surprising. Sixty five percent. So lower than the critics. Lower Shot. than the critics. Haters. Yeah. You know what? I did not take homophobia into account. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. 65 That's a homophobic score percent. in pride month in pride month <laughs> in... <laughs> yeah that's really you should be ashamed of yourself that's Shame. really surprising Shame. to me uh i yeah. i i oh. would have i if i was guessing i would have guessed it was higher than the critic score uh because yeah. it's like cult status i mean as we said chucky himself is just an icon so that's um that's wild so the critic consensus is Child's play occasionally stumbles across its tonal tightrope of comedy and horror, but it's genuinely creepy monster and some deaf direction from Tom Holland makes this chiller stand out on the show. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, I normally agree with whole critics about horror films, but this time I think they kind of nailed it. Yeah. Mm hmm. A rip roaring low budget screamer, says Nigel Andrews. A screamer. <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Um, no. uh, I don't see any funny. There's not. It's like so sh- as, as low as these scores are, they're not even showing me a lot of negative. There's only mm-hmm. like two negatives visual like that I can see um, on this page and they are not funny. They're very kind of pretentious. So um, <laughs> we'll just that can be funny. we'll skip Randy's little segment here and uh, say uh, it was a tie. So Bob got one. Rachel got one. Congratulations. Right. Nice. If I was going to tie with anyone, Bob, I'm glad it was you. <laughs> Likewise, I don't ever want to tie with Justin, but with you, any day. Well, you don't have to worry about that, Bob, because I'm always whooping your tail. (laughs) You just wait till next week. All right. Let's see, Bob, do you think we should go hunting? Do you think we should go? You think? Uh, We got some trivia to get into. Oh, yeah, my bad. Oh, man, I just can't wait for Randy to come back. Randy would never do (laughs) this. I cannot handle this. It's trivia time. Trivia. Oh my god! Just yeah, just let me cue it up, man. Yeah, then Bob. You all right, you just yeah, you go, you got it. Take the wheel, Bob. Take the wheel. Taking the wheel. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a decent amount of trivia on this one. Um, so Chucky's name, Charles Lee Ray, is derived from the names of several no- notorious killers: Charles Manson, Lee Harvey Oswald, and James Earl Ray. All combined to make Charles Lee. Cool. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Um, the uh, The original working title for the movie was "Batteries Not Included." Uh, I guess Spielberg started making a movie with that same title around that time. I don't know what that movie. You haven't seen up. it? Oh no! Oh, that he actually made so it. So depressing. <laughs> oh really? really? So depressing. It's like it was advertised as like a kids' movie where these kids get these like alien ro- like little tiny robots and you're like oh this is gonna be so cute it is like the watership down of like what alien robots I've never really <laughs> heard of that. bummer damn because it's a bummer hmm. <laughs> let's review it maybe damn oh yeah uh, they, they then changed the name to blood buddy and then landed on child's play eventually yeah okay <laughs> so. yeah that is a rough trajectory. I'm glad they ended up yeah. where they did. <laughs> Blood, Blood buddy. buddy. Again, yeah. circling back to 1988. Bad idea. Yeah. Bad idea. Yeah. Different kind of movie. Um uh, the um the language that's after he sewed you B2 repeatedly during the <laughs> He's not <a> Blood Buddy. <laughs> Blood Buddy. <laughs> the um the uh, voodoo that's spoken in this, um, it's, it's a language, it's, it's a mixture of Haitian Cre- and Creole, um, but I guess is often mistaken as French. Um, there's a, basically, there's a translation, I don't know how accurate this is, um, but the translation of what Charles Z. Ray says is, I call to thee, Dambala, give me the power I beg of you. Some of this is just in English, because I remember him saying yeah, that. Yeah, he said that. Um, <laughs> uh, leave me mercy from this mortal coil, grant me life beyond death. Move my mortal soul into this vessel. I command thee, Dumbala. And then he just repeats that line several times. What if he um, just starts blinking right now? <laughs> yeah. Oh God. <laughs> that would be Great. an awesome behind the Another scenes. Another summoning. On <laughs> I see that. Go ahead. Add, I'll go ahead and add the CGI real quick. You know. <laughs> Do, it. Do it in post. After effects. Yeah. Uh. Screenwriter Don Mancini has admitted this movie was partially inspired by the Zuni warrior doll who attacks Karen Black um, mm. in the Amelia segment of the television movie Trilogy of Terror from 1975. Have you guys seen that? Heck yeah, that thing is scary. Mm, yes. I, I can totally see it now. I can. To- mm. There's even like a part where she throws it in an oven. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys have not seen the fetish doll? Mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh yeah. That's a good one. I'm not up on my fetish dolls, I guess. Dude. That is I got something. <laughs> Time to brush up. I need to do my homework. Damn. Beast. I got a day ahead of me. <laughs> I got some kinks that need uncovering. <laughs> uh the uh, the scene where Andy is crying that Chucky will come and kill him. The filmmakers <laughs> This is kind of fucked up. Had to make Alex Alex Vincent cry on camera by telling him, you know, Alex, think of sad things. Think about your parents dying. Damn, dude, that's fucked up. Damn. That's kind of fucked up. 
He looked, yeah. it's really fucked up because the performance yeah. was really good. <laughs> like, he yeah. really looked yeah. really sad. Are we praising child abuse? Yeah. <laughs> Did, are we part of the problem? Thank God this is entertaining me. 3.75. That can, that can <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh... Landmark Brewster Building is apparently the setting for the family's home that's in Chicago. I'm unfamiliar with that building. It looks beautiful. Um, this, I did like uh, that so, design. The the uh, elevator was really cool. Yeah, dude, it looked mm -hmm. super super nice, super yeah. swanky. Um, this this uh, this movie was remade. Um, there's like a, there's a Bollywood version of this okay. movie out there. Cool, cool. Googling. Um, <laughs> it's called Open up a new I'll, tab right next to my you know it's, kink it was released tab. in <laughs> released in 1993 it's called Zapot Lila um mm. I did find one scene on YouTube and it's like part of one of the songs they sing and it's entertaining it's, okay it's pretty wild I like to hunt that down I wonder like if that's a common thing like popular horror movies maybe there's the doll yet yeah, rachel <laughs> behind the scenes found the doll uh from the remake i wonder if that's like a common thing in bollywood to like remake popular horror movies in like bollywood format with song and dance and all that oh that'd be dope that's a new segment for us to start covering I guess. yeah find out what they're called and like when they were released well, there's, there's like, like a scream for sure really yeah yeah mm -hmm. I, I don't maybe know we should do bollywood a we should do a poll with like three Bollywood horror remakes on it. Like Maybe. that would be interesting. Maybe mm -hmm. file that one away. <laughs> we'll get to it eventually. I'm sure. Um, Nine this more the last, years. The, yeah, well, it'll come around eventually. This is the last bit of trivia I have here. Um, Dumbala, who's like the god that that uh, Chucky calls calls upon to transfer his soul into the, the doll's body, um, is is actually one of the most important. Um, gods in, in all of Iowa, which I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, which uh, just spirits that belong to Haitian voodoo and other African um, religions. Um, I guess he's traditionally portrayed as a great white or black serpent um, originating from the city of Ouidou. Um And he's also known as the Sky Father and the primordial creator of all life. So that is who Dumbala is. Oh, okay. Now we know. We Same. all know. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the trivia I got for this one. Hmm. Um, now, Justin, we can go hunting. Okay. Straight chilling. Good around the way. <laughs> What is a cooter and why do we hunt them? Ho, oh, cooter's character type in a straight chill and exclusive cooter must hit three of these five points to be considered a cooter, but we want the cooter with the most points. The five points of cooterdom are sexual deviancy, manipulation, smug arrogance, overall looking attire, and overall patheticness. Do we have a cooter in child's play? I nominate Chucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems well, like a safe bet. Bob, what you got? What's his biggest point? Uh, well, we let's start with patheticness. Uh, he is terrorizing a child. Uh, I mean, really, a whole family, but primarily a child, um, taking advantage of this kid too, uh, yeah. manipulating this Man child. Yeah, manipulation would have been my highest. Yeah, yeah. manipulation. Yeah, he is definitely manipulating the kid to carry him around, um, which I wonder, too. I, I guess that's pretty smart. I assume now looking back that he's still kind of like gaining some functions, you know, because as he's like morphing, he gets yeah. more and more like weight and consciousness and stuff. So maybe he like well, really needed the kid to help him get around at first. And he's kind of getting yeah. more and more capable because at the end of the movie, he's like fucking he doesn't need the kid. He's scaling, you know, the fire escapes and everything. So, uh, but yeah, manipulation for sure. Um, patheticness. I yeah, think I think fine. patheticness for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Is there uh, any sexual smug as hell? Smug. I mean, later there is. So if we're like doing full canon, oh then yeah, yes. yeah. If we're yeah. doing this, I'm like, mm. Mm, yeah, I nothing mean, the, really particular. Well, think about the mural. Was there some like sexually deviant things on the mural? Mm, that's a been. good point because really, yeah, we're taking in like this whole guy, Charles Ray or whatever. So, um. Yeah, he was naked. Was he like banging a snake or something? Maybe I don't. Know. Yeah, I think definitely banging. A Hell snake. yeah, snake <laughs> banging. There's something going on. My head can he was now. <laughs> now. <Think a> lot. <laughs> uh, so I would say store. yes. Yeah. I mean, I think it's kind of sexually deviant to paint murals of yourself. Like, you know, well, in your speak own house. for yourself. Never come to my house. <laughs> when did you ever say you weren't a deviant? <laughs> uh, yeah, true. Um, yeah, and also, too, yeah, I guess, well, that's manipulation. I was going to say with the voodoo guy, he's, like, blackmailing him or, just like, threatening him. He's literally him. breaking yeah, his legs. Yeah. That's pretty manipulative. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's a 10, a 10 yeah. on the scale when you're snapping limbs. Smug arrogance for sure. 100%. Patheticness. Looking at Tyre, he's a doll. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, yeah, I think that's fair. I think beforehand, I guess we could. I don't. I guess I need to look at this mural because in when I try to picture this mural in my head, all these kind of crazy things keep popping up in my mind, and I'm like, okay. Um, I feel like he was wearing this wild top hat while also naked. Does that like? register with anybody am i making that up i don't remember i honestly. hope not i hope that is true i want that to be true yeah i'm gonna, I got, I'm gonna have it going in the background here Let's i'm see. gonna see <laughs> boop, 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 boop. oh it's hard Thanks. for me because i said child's play painting or mural and it's just pictures of chucky himself damn it oh yeah it's hard to kind of um, like lock down voodoo mural child's play yeah yeah, it's uh, snakes. I do Dolls, remember the snake. I feel like he had it. Oh, here. Okay, I can kind of see it. Let's. He's definitely naked. Um, Hallelujah. Several times. Oh, I gotta like. All right. Here uh, no top hat. I was wrong. Damn, There's damn. a weird. Oh, okay. I'm there. I've made it. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Enhance. Uh, all right, she's looking around. Yeah, There's enhance, a lot of enhance. upsetting mannequins. Save Hell right yeah. click. <laughs> Great. Uh, now. He's cutting. Oh, is that his own arm? There's um, a cut up lady who is just boobs. Sexual oh, okay. Deviant. Oh, yeah. It sexual okay. Deviant. Sexual deviants. Huh. This yeah. is a wild mural. <laughs> So I think he hits all five then. That, yeah, that I think he does. Points. Yeah, Peter's maybe a little lighter on the attire. You can't help if you're a doll, but you know. What do you I mean, he can't help. He can well, just not be a doll. Not if you want to live forever, He's Bob. trying. Don't He's trying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, so. too, if we, oh my, I forgot about this aspect. If we want to give some kind of look in attire, that Chucky doll that's in the show that is mm -hmm. giant size that's like a mannequin or whatever that thing is horrifying you guys know what i'm talking about no. so when the kid when the kid is watching the chucky show before he gets oh, the doll oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's yeah, this yeah. by like, the way the director in that yeah really yeah, that oh. is the director that yep, thing is Tom horrifying <laughs> oh, it's horrifying I, yeah the 80s was, like, was a wild Ugh. time man yeah. <laughs> This shit's fucked up. Which I could. <laughs> the thing is, you're right. That's plausible that they would try to pull something like that off in the '80s. And like, oh yeah, don't you yeah. love this little mascot? You're like, fuck no, that thing's terrible. Yeah. Um, Have you seen banana bananas yeah. in pajamas? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Holy shit, that's a throwback. Right. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Wow. <laughs> that's awesome. Damn. Uh, so yeah, I book him. I think we got him. I yeah, don't think I there's think really will. anybody else. No. Maybe Eddie Caputo if we want a dark horse. I mean, he's uh, like Caputo. hanging out in a crack den, left his friend to get Yeah, yeah, yeah he did sell doll. his friend, I guess. He, Cooter attire you know. for show. Yeah. I don't know about manipulation. Pathetic for bailing on your friend. Pathetic for bailing on your mm -hmm. friend. I guess it's kind of manipulation to kind of maybe sell him out, I assume. Um, mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. well, I guess we don't know the finer details of the situation, but... Um, yeah, patheticness, 
probably manipulation, maybe some licking a tire, crack house. Yeah. Um, yeah. We could probably book him too. They can share a cooter yeah. light. Cooter yeah. light. Mis- yeah. we'll call misdemeanor as as opposed to Mr. Yeah. Felonist over here. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Cooter light. Deal. All right. I think we got him. Yeah. We got him. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's uh let's talk about what we've been watching this week. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Want me to do a little acapella number for you? <laughs> uh, there it is. Hey, gang. What, what you been, been watching? watching? I'm not used to all this Nailed responsibility. It. <laughs> all, this, all these button mashings really putting me to the test. I uh, Actually, after the cooter bump, I was like, all right, I'm done with the bumps. Don't have to worry anymore. <laughs> So close, man. Just one more and then you're home free. Mm-hmm. Uh, that means something totally different. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you gotta take them out of context. <laughs> Ooh, phrasing. Right, what... um, yeah. Rachel, uh, what you been watching this week? So I haven't been watching a ton, but I did catch the new season of Black Mirror. Are you guys watching mm-hmm. that? I have not, but I was having lunch with the buddy yesterday and he was talking it up, so I gotta check it mm-hmm. out. This I haven't seen it is... yet. It's quite good. I won't spoil anything for you, but I will say it, it leans into horror more than previous seasons. Wow. Cool. There's one episode that I don't even know what the tech angle is. It's just a monster of the week. Okay. Cool. Um, hmm. Yeah, that is pretty fun. And um, the show can be pretty bleak. There is one episode that is so dark that it is like haunting me to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is the very first episode is an episode called Joan is Awful, which is uh, it stars Annie Murphy from Schitt's Creek. I don't know if you're a Schitt's Creek fan, but she, I love her. She's amazing. And it's and her and Salma Hayek. And oh. it is both horrifying because it like plays in sort of the realms of AI, which as someone who was a writer <laughs> about to watch my entire industry disappear yeah. to robots. <laughs> some of you did not watch Terminator and it shows. Um, but uh, it's actually, even though it does kind of explore those aspects of tech and future tech dystopia that is current tech dystopia, uh, it's also very funny and has a little whisper of hope at the end. So, like, if you are a fan of the series, but you're, like, clinging to San Junipero because it's the only happy episode, there is a new one in canon that you can look forward to. So, if, yeah, I would definitely recommend the new the new season of Black Mirror. Nice. Mine, yeah. A- added to the list for sure. Yeah. The only other thing I watched is a movie called Jagged Mind. Did anyone see this? I started it, so I'm about halfway <laughs> through. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't want to say anything to spoil it for oh, you, okay. but I will say, in to oh. some degree, mm-hmm. uh, some of our issues with child's play are addressed in a more positive uh, mm-hmm. way okay. in this film, um, mm-hmm. specifically around the mythology in it. The director, Kelly Colley, Uh, started her career as an anthropologist and archaeologist. Um, She actually got into filmmaking on a dig site because she ended up working with some people who were doing a documentary there and she got a producing credit because she just like was helping them so much and transitioned into filmmaking. So those sort of like religious aspects are things that she treats with a lot more respect in that Mm. film. Um, I liked it. I liked it. I thought it was quite good. I was digging on it so far. Yeah, I'm about... 30 to 45 minutes in yeah okay it like blends two of my favorite things which is like women directed horror and like an eight like an 80s 90s erotic thriller which Mm -hmm. is like my favorite genre so so yeah i i enjoyed it i was like in the bag for it kind of (laughs) it was it kind of like just the overall look and style of it it reminded me of a movie that was in my top 10 last year that i cannot remember the name of uh bob do you remember my top 10 (laughs) what was the movie about maybe i can help it was about the uh, like housemaid, um, or she goes to take care of the uh, nanny. She's a nanny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes, nanny, probably, right? Was it yes. nanny? Yes. <laughs> it is <Yeah>. nanny. <laughs> so I have yes. a fun fact about the movie you're watching and sort of the style, because I, I interviewed the director, and I was oh. asking her about influences on the mm-hmm. film. 
And she was like, well, I was like, yeah, I was thinking Rosemary's Baby, mm. Don't Worry Darling, those, you know, mm. horror films. And she's like, so actually the visual style of this movie is inspired by Ratatouille. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. She wanted to take certain elements of the visual style of that and bring it into live action. Mm. So you may okay. pick up on some Ratatouille Interesting. when you go back to it. <laughs> yeah, one of the things, I guess one of the reasons they kind of, str- it was the kind of like the color palette. It is like their most it's like where it's very vibrant um yes especially and, in that bar in little haiti mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and there were moments like that in nanny too that just like the visuals like similarities kind of like struck for me so um what's oh, okay. uh what's what's the name of the movie again jagged mind it's on hulu ja- jagged mind on hulu okay nice adding that to the list as well yeah the list is long <laughs> yeah <laughs> Longer every it's day. another good year for horror, which is a bummer for my social life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. Anything else, Rachel? That's it for me. Yeah. All that's right. what I've been watching lately. Juice, what you been watching? So I've like I have to navigate. There's like some things we can't talk about yet. <laughs> um, Ooh, we so love that's an embargo. Two, yeah, <laughs> two weeks. So oh, I'm navigating and saying like, yeah. Um, I watched Mother. Um, not uh, so Bong Joon Ho's Mother from 2009. Um, that was the first time I'd ever watched that one. Uh, that was really good. I like that movie. Uh, I did watch The Wizard of Oz to cover with Jacqueline on YouTube, and I hadn't seen that in a long time, but of course it's a staple, and it was interesting to like go in and deep dissect, and I also watched the mashup with uh, Dark Side of the Moon, which people mm-hmm. call it like dark side of the rainbow or whatever i also smoked weed in high school <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> well i was thinking bob didn't we do that when we were younger together didn't we i thought we yeah. did okay i thought I we think did andy actually had it like on a dvd like way back in the yeah, day yeah I, re- I thought we did now it's all mashed up on youtube perfectly yeah. so you could just do it that oh, way wow. so yeah i know i, know I used to have to do it back in my day yeah line it up all right what you have to do with the roar. second roll yeah. <laughs> yeah so um that was uh it was interesting to go back and to watch it with uh, pink floyd again um i started jagging mine gotta finish it and then oh i watched uh ichi the killer which i have been on this like as i was in bed last night i was like ranting on slack about how that movie is just like a crazy japanese spoof of batman um uh, but I, I I really enjoyed it. It was it's a a well. Okay, hang on. Let me t- I I <laughs> okay. found that movie very interesting. Cooter alert. Cooter <laughs> alert. Cooter alert. <laughs> I found that I found it very very interesting. Um, and it's a movie I would love to talk about because I just couldn't help but like share a bunch of my thoughts on slack and uh, nobody else you know it's one of those movies where like it's been out forever and i'm just now watching it and like nobody else has seen it in a long time i'm like talk to me about this so uh but yeah it was very interesting uh movie wild um but yeah yeah japanese spoof of batman i think um that's that's all i could talk about i think uh rob what have you been watching (laughs) Uh, a couple things. I've been uh, re-watching the first season of The Bear, which is a Hulu... No, FX. It's on FX. So it is on Hulu. Yeah. It's on Hulu. <laughs> um, have, have you guys watched The Bear? The second season is coming out next week, so I wanted mm-hmm. to like revisit the first one. Are you guys familiar with that? I haven't watched it I'm yet. I'm familiar, but I haven't watched it. It's, a, it's for grown-ups who don't just watch <laughs> sci-fi and horror all the time. <laughs> What? Yeah, it's um I guess it's a drama. Um, there's definitely some comedy. Um but it's yeah, it's about this guy who's like a world-renowned chef and his his brother owns um like a small restaurant in Chicago and he passes away and he moves back home to Chicago to take over the restaurant and it's like in shambles. So he's like trying his best to fix it and not getting a whole lot of help from his family or his you know newfound employees. Um but it's Super interesting. Um, really, the acting is incredible. Um, it's the first season. I think is eight episodes, um, and I recommend watching it. They're like half hour episodes, so it's easy to kind of burn Ooh. through. And okay, it's, that's uh, nice. Yeah, that makes yeah. it a lot more like, oh yeah, I can yeah, do yeah. I could do that. I could do that. Like forty five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had the same exact thought. I was like. Mm, yeah, I'm 30 oh. okay <laughs> yeah well, maybe i'll pencil that one in yeah 
<laughs> there's it's... nothing like a short run time to sell me on something mm, you can, i know yeah. it yeah mm-hmm. i know it it's 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 great though i i thoroughly enjoy it and um this second season it's gonna drop i think on thursday and they're putting like all episodes out same day which they did not do um i don't believe for the first season but um yeah looking forward to that um i've also just been like binging no reservations because the entirety of the series is now on max um and i hadn't seen those in a long ass time so it's been kind of fun like revisiting some of like anthony bourdain's older stuff um and i also watched a couple new releases that dungeons and dragons movie i watched (laughs) that Okay. How was it, Bob? It's, it's a big, dumb, fun adventure movie. Um, like really, like heavy on the comedy, way heavier than I than I would have assumed. Uh, but yeah, it was a fun yeah. popcorn movie. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. 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 Um, and I also watched that new Super Mario Brothers movie, which I liked more than I thought I would have. But I, I, I didn't necessarily kind of thing. love it's, it. It's but... not like amazing, but you're like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chris Pratt wasn't like as Pratty as I anticipated, which was nice. Too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Jack Black is amazing as always. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's like some like really small, tiny character. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's like a flame or something in a little cage. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like hilariously dark. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Where he just like movie. says like fucked up shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh my god, I've never been related dark. to a character more in my life. Yeah, it's like, I welcome death or the something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I don't, that's from, I, if I had to guess, I think it's from Mario Galaxy. Oh, okay, yeah. I never never played but uh yeah one of the mario galaxies that character was like the standout funniest moment in, in that whole movie um yeah both both those i i like more than i thought i would have um but that's basically all i've been watching of course thoroughbreds get ready for caitlin's show highly recommend that movie check out thoroughbreds that was on hulu it might still be there i'm not totally sure mm. um yeah that's pretty much it um so yeah we don't have any voicemails this week if you guys are listening and want to call in to leave a voicemail for next week's show you can hit us up at 904-638-3231 um juice do you have any prompts you want to throw out for next week rachel if you have any prompts feel free to, to throw them out for anybody you might want to call in next week i was thinking about like got any plans for fourth of july you know what's your plans yeah. for fourth of july that's all I got. Fireworks, <laughs> blowing up fingers, <laughs> just blowing them clean off. I'm just prepping for spooky season. I'm just getting ready. It's already ready for it. Yeah, man. I'm pre excited and pre exhausted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You're telling me. Bitty, bitty. <laughs> yeah. No shit. I think I'll I'll throw one out there. It, like if you guys um had any dolls like growing up like what were the brand names like you know were you like creeped out by them were they like something you carried around all the time like what kind of weird toys did you have growing up wasn't that our prompt last week was it i don't remember <laughs> well it doesn't matter because no double down in. double down mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> too much Now's your chance. wizard of oz and pink floyd my yeah, friend <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute what did we Time do is a last flat week? circle. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Hell yeah. Right, Russ. <laughs> yeah, call in 904-638-3231. Uh, yeah. Uh, Rachel, thanks so much again for sitting in with us. It's yeah. always a pleasure having you. Thank you so much for inviting me. This is so much fun and it was a fun one to talk about. I, I don't know that I've ever done a deep dive on this. I've just been like quietly a fan. So this was this was a ton of fun to finally get to talk about it. Awesome. Yeah, That's a lot of fun. For sure. Yeah. Um, do you want to remind everybody one more time where they can find your other shows? Sure. Sure. You can find, uh, uh, we are at zombiegirls.com. That's G-R-R-L-Z.com. Or you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at ZG Podcasts. That's podcast with an S. Um, and if you want to follow me, I'm at Rachie Pants um, on Twitter. I'm on the other things, but like the only thing I'm ever really on is on Twitter. Gotcha. Um, and then if you want to hang out with me IRL, I will be at San Diego Comic-Con next month. They have not announced everything yet, so I can't say what panel I will be moderating, but I will be there that Thursday. So if you are there, swing by, say hi. Love to meet you. It's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Badass. 
Uh, yeah, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, we're going to be back next week, as always. Um, we're talking about the winner of the June poll, which was Mars Attacks. Finally doing it. Yeah. I'm excited. Ack, ack. Um, heck yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, <laughs> get another week Attacks. without Randy. Ooh, I know. <laughs> I know. Probably. I don't know. He might. He might try uh, yeah, and his way back in. We'll see. We'll see. Yes. Uh, that's what happens when your boy goes on vacation. He just, you know, doesn't he doesn't care anymore. Hollywood Randy these days, you know. Vacation Randy. <laughs> um, yeah, check out Mars Attacks. Get ready for next week's show. Where you can find us at Straight Chilling Podcast everywhere on all the socials. Um, check us out if you want to join in our uh, daily Slack channel conversations. Just let us know on one of those social media outlets, and I'll send you a link so you can join in on the fun. And yeah, that does it. Until next week. As always, all you mother truckers, please keep chilling.